Hello and welcome to another Impreza video. Okay, today I'm gonna to be doing some maintenance, you know, cause they're daily drivers and they need their maintenance. Oil looks pretty good. It's a little bit of black in there, but that's to be expected. Not burning any oil. I got a bucket here. So you can guess what it is. No, it's not cleaning my car, cause I don't do that. <laughs> I gotta change my filter, my air filter. So we're gonna get in the air box and remove our filter. While I'm here, um, I came up with a partial solution to the weather strip mod. Instead of taking it out completely, what I've done is I've kind of just pulled it off to the side here and left a um, gap here so the air can come out. You know, if I want a little bit more, I can pull it over. If I want a bit less, I can do that. This way, you know, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get the ceiling around this area here where your vent is. And then you still have this kind of open area to have that little bit of air escape passively. For, for the longest time, I've been recording a lot of uh, MAF, mass airflow rate. What I found is that I can get up to around 122, 123 grams per second, which has something like a potential of around 160 brake horsepower, which is engine horsepower, not at the wheels, but at the engine itself, at the crank. What I noticed this afternoon when I went out for a drive was that I just, during park, I um, pressed on the throttle and my math went up to like 90 something. And I'm like, how can that even be possible? So I'm thinking, is there like a little air leak in here somewhere that maybe lets in that little hint of air before it kind of seals itself up? I may be getting like really good numbers because of that. But one of the reasons why I chose this uh, particular intake setup was because of ease of maintenance. So if you know, most aftermarket cold air intakes utilize a um, cone type filter. And when I bought this Takeda kit, which is meant for the, the 2.5 Legacy and Outback or something, it came with a box like a metal box, wasn't completely sealed, had high vibration issues, and um, it had a big cone filter. The cone filter was okay, it's just, you know, the box wasn't sealed up so that you get kind of like that engine air leakage into there. It's really important if you want to have a cold intake charge that this area is sealed right to the front of the radiator. And that's why there's this scoop here, right? Because it actually funnels up air in front of the radiator. Anything after, like here and in, or if it's just sitting in the wheel well without any uh, shielding, it's gonna suck in all this kind of passive heat around here. And you know, this, it's hot, right? When you run hot, it, it gets, it sucks in hot air. So the reason why I did it was for ease of maintenance because look, you just take this scoop off, your filter's like right here. Also another bonus of this OEM box style is that you can just put in a different filter when you're cleaning your other one. That's some considerations that you might think of uh, when you are going to an aftermarket cold air intake. So here's my Apexi air filter. It's a little bit dirty. So this one can be cleaned and reused. That's why I bought it. The idea of throwing away things kind of kills me. But while I clean this and let it dry, I can always put in a paper filter, right? Yeah, you get OEM performance, but at the same time, you know, there's interchangeability. That's why it's a good compromise to have panel filter, you know, with a better intake tubing that's not as restrictive. So what am I going to clean it with? I'm going to clean it with OxyClean. I'm going to use a little bit of this in here. OxyClean gets rid of oily grit, the dust that dissolve any kind of particulates or like residue or gum. Okay, so I've um, just kind of rinsed off from the back this uh, filter media. I always thought that this media, kind of like a chamois cloth. So like, why don't I just bunch up a chamois cloth and see if it works as a air filter i think that's what they did honestly <laughs> like this material <laughs> anyway we got our solution here just got you know a little bit of the oxyclean and a bunch of water and have that stuff kind of dissolve i won't bore you with um these these mundane tasks but this is basically what i do to clean the filter there's definitely a little bit of sediment and dirt particulates that have come out of this water here it's kind of murky right i mean when you use oxyclean it it gets a little bit discolored, but this you can I can basically tell that there's some like oil and stuff in here. Second rinse. It's a lot better, right? One, two, three. Splish, splash. There, I was taking the bed. Definitely want to rinse multiple times. Okay, so third rinse, pretty clean the water. So 
I think that's uh, good enough. Swear it's a chamois cloth. Chamois. It's got so much water in it. So while we're here, this particular airbox has been modified in a previous video. I've cut off um, this section here where the original uh, MAF sensor uh, would be screwed into a plastic piece here. In, in this case, I've used reused the hose that came with this Takeda kit, found the right area to cut so that I can mate this together. In the airbox itself, usually that's a sealed hole, but what I've done is I actually bought the milk jug, which is a resonator, to reduce kind of like any sounds and vibrations. I used to have that open, but it did find that debris from their wheel well would come up and then get the filter even more dirty. So, you know, if I was ever racing or something, maybe I'd open that up and like duct. But um, for now, you know, as a daily, this scoop, this snorkis, the front snorkis, and this uh, take hole is uh, plenty to get the 120 something grams per second that powers this little fp20 engine so in my cache of parts in my garage i just have like an oem style filter which is not too different than the um the apexi one here uh but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test so i can get around 123 grams per second with the apexi filter and this um intake system my previous attempt with the oem box and the OEM uh, pipe with a paper filter was around 106 so that's a very big difference I want to retest that so I'm going to put this paper filter back in the system run it for a couple days and see what kind of numbers I can pull with this kind of hybrid setup you want to make sure that any of these pieces are sealed really really well um, otherwise you're going to get some air coming through here or through here on, under high loads and that's going to be bypassing the filter but i suspect maybe like when there's like a lot of vibration maybe there's like a little tiny little gap behind that filter and it just kind of like sucks in an extra amount that's why i can get such high readings we're going to see if this oem filter has a better seal on it than the apexi one who knows I i'm actually very curious so this may be beyond what some owners are willing to do as it is very minimal and kind of just a little bit extra. The gap that is found around here is not a complete seal with this um, OEM snorkers. So what I do is use like, a, I use gaffer's tape, but you can use like hockey tape or whatever kind of tape you want. It's like a cloth tape. It's kind of add like a little micro seal to uh, the edges of that intake so when you put it in, it's kind of like a snug fit here. And um, it just provides like a slightly better seal uh, when you uh, put it in the box so that you don't, you don't get that air getting sucked in like right here. A well-sealed air box performs much better than just like an open air box. So can't stress that enough. So every little bit helps. When Subaru gave that, you know, 148 horsepower, that was with the stock ECU tune. That was with whatever temperature that they were testing at and most likely with vdc enabled which you know limits the car's potential in terms of like full-on resources so it turns out that after putting in a clean filter the previous one had been not cleaned in almost six months i'm sorry i know you know life just happens and you just you know, that's why you got to do your maintenance. So I put the OEM filter in and my math readings, guess what they were? 126 plus. Okay, so that's that's a good amount of change, like a dirty filter, this filter, and, you know, the amount of change. I wonder what the new clean filter will do. So, you know, we're going to continue this experiment. I'm just really surprised. So there's so much potential for this car um, through an intake and I haven't even touched my exhaust other than an axle back.